Welcome back. Uh, this session we're going to be starting to look at CSS and how you can use CSS to make a page look really interesting. We're going to add colours and change the font, have a bit of fun with the size, and really see all the ways that you can customise an individual web page to make it look more modern and interesting. With that in mind, let's get started. We see here the simplest way to add a style to an element, and it's just to add an attribute called style. Uh, in this style, we're adding a colour of yellow and a background colour of red. You'll note that all spellings are the American version, uh, which is C-O-L-O-R, uh, rather than C-O-L-O-U-R, which is the British spelling. As you can imagine, simply adding a style attribute every time um, quickly becomes quite unwieldy when we want to add multiple styles in. Um, and is really not a terribly convenient way to add more than about two styles in. Uh, here is an example of a div with some extra styles in, including width and height attributes. Um, and then the colors, the red and yellow colors as well. Let's have a look at what that would look like in brackets. If you haven't downloaded the starting materials, you can do that by clicking on the HTML1 video link in the description or on the banner uh, at the top of this video. You don't have to have downloaded the materials. You can simply just create a new file within brackets. And that's what we're going to do now. After opening brackets, you can uh, simply right click in the explorer on the left hand side of the window, create new file, and we'll call this mycss.html. And we'll create the regular elements, uh, HTML head and body. Then within the body, we'll create a div as we did on the slide and add the styles in that we saw. We'll then add some content in there. And now we're going to do a live preview. As we can see, it's created the elements using the styles that we've given it. As you can imagine, we might want to create styles that we can reuse and control from a centralized location. We need to therefore have a way of identifying our elements. So for that, we use selectors. Uh, as we can see here, we have a div. It has an attribute of ID and an attribute of class, as well as some text written inside it. You then can reference them using CSS, displayed at the bottom there, where we have a hash to identify it by ID and a dot to represent a class. Just a quick side note about IDs. They must be unique on the page, um, but classes you can reuse a lot. So an ID might be something you give to, say, a banner heading. And a class might be reusable, like a button, for instance, where you want all of the buttons to have the same set of styles on a page. The next simplest way to add CSS to a page is using the style tags. Uh, typically, these are put in the head of the HTML document, um, but allow you to easily reuse styles within the same page. We'll have a look at that now. We see the page as we left it before. This time, we're going to add a style element into the head, like this. It doesn't need any attributes or anything like that, and we can simply write our CSS directly into it. So let's create a button class up here, and we'll give that all of the styles that we used before. Now, CSS requires that all of our elements have a name and a value, uh, as you can see here. It's easier to read if you put each new set of keys and values on their own line and every line needs to end in a semicolon. If you leave a semicolon off, as I accidentally have done at the end here, any styles that come afterwards won't be shown. In this case, it would have been fine because it was the last element of the style, but it can cause a bug where some styles don't show up or some do. So now we have our class. We need to change our attribute here to be class equals button. And now load the page again. As we can see, all of our styles have been preserved. Where this really comes into its own is where we can create a series of buttons. So we could create buttons for a web page, for instance. We can simply copy and paste our new elements here. We might have a blog. And we might have an about page as well. So now we do that, save it, reload the page. And we can see we've got our three buttons there. Let's make them look a bit more button-like. We'll also add a margin on the bottom of them, a 
of five pixels so that we can tell them apart. This time when we reload the page, and we can see it looks a lot more like a button. We can do other things like centering the text by using text align center. Again, note it's American spelling. And we can set the line height equal to the same as the height. And that will center the text both vertically and horizontally, like so. We can also change the font size. And there are two ways of doing this. You can do this by percentage. In this example, we've got the font dash size colon 200%. Or you can do it by specifying the number of pixels that you want each letter of the font to be. And you can also change the type of font. That attribute in CSS is the font family attribute. Here are some examples. You'll notice that some of them are in inverted commas. And that is because the names have spaces in. So if there is a space there, you need to wrap it around in inverted commas. It actually doesn't make a difference if you wrap the single word ones in inverted commas as well. But I haven't just to show the two different ways of doing that. Finally, here's an example of some of the different fonts that you can get. You'll see that I've gone back to using the inline styles for this one, and just to make it a bit clearer. So you'll notice the first one, I've specified font family times new Roman, and separated by a semicolon, and then the font size is 36 pixels. Uh, the next one is Arial, and then Georgia, Lucida Console, Console New, and Verdana. If we run that up, and you can see a group of different fonts on display here. You can also download web fonts and use those uh, so you have access to lots of different font styles should you need them. Uh, we'll cover how to do that in another video. Well, thanks very much for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed this delve into CSS and started to see some of the cool things that it can do to a web page to help you customize it. Join us next time. We'll be looking at some more things you can do with CSS, some more kind of interesting tips and tricks that you can use to make a, a website more interesting. Um, and then we're going to start to integrate that into our project that we've been doing uh, from the HTML, so turning our image gallery into something a lot more, more interesting. As always, please like and subscribe down below, and thanks very much for watching. See you again soon.